Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to how to build a simple DC electronic load with Arduino. And this is going to be part one in a part two or three series. You can kind of see a glimpse of the schematic we're going to be looking at for our simple e-load. Before I get started, I'll just mention if you're interested in Forstronics contracting services, design services, or manufacturing services, check out Forstronics.com. You can follow me on Twitter. And please, if you like what you see here, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get started. Okay, so what is a DC electronic load or an e-load for short? Well, an e-load is like the opposite of a power supply. A power supply sources power to your design so you can test it and, and run your design. An e-load sinks power. So a power supply is putting power out, an e-load can sink power and it can allow you to control the voltage or current of the power source that's connected to. And so why is this useful? Well, basically, we can use it to test or evaluate power supply designs or, you know, for instance, does a linear regulator get too hot if I use it at this current level? Well, you know, in its data sheet, you can calculate it, but with an e-load, you can kind of see it in real life. And then also it can be used for evaluating batteries. This is something I, I use it for is if you have a design and you kind of know what its power profile is, you know, from, for instance, it might be asleep for 10 seconds and then it wakes up and does some activities and it has a large transmit pulse and then it goes back to sleep. You can simulate that with an e-load and you can evaluate different types of batteries, different types of battery technologies, you can compare brands, so on and so forth. So it's for using, or I should say evaluating power supplies, batteries, or, or any type of power source. Okay, here is the design we're gonna use for our simple e-load and First of all, you're going to need an Arduino that has a DAC output. So I'm showing an Arduino Zero, and that's what I'll be using in my example. But you could use the Arduino Duo. You could use uh, the Maker 1000, whatever has a DAC output. You can also see some of the other main parts we're going to use in our design. An op amp, and a MOSFET, and a fairly high-powered resistor. And the power level of the resistor can vary based on your application, which we'll talk about. Now what I did is I listed model numbers of what I'm using for the MOSFET or the op amp. You really don't have to use these model numbers. These are actually what I had in lab, lab stock. So this is the op amp I'm using. It, it has a positive and a negative supply. So I have, a, I have to have a power supply that can put out positive voltage and negative voltage. And I should say, before I go too far into this, I'm assuming you have some basic knowledge of op amps and MOSFETs. If you don't, you might want to just review some of the, the basics on them. For the MOSFET, uh, I have the IRF540N, which is an N-channel MOSFET. Reason I chose this one, though, is because it's fairly high power. It can handle fairly high power. And that way, as you're going to see in this design, we're going to run some current through this. So we need it to be fairly high power to handle whatever type of load we're going to use. And then we have a resistor. I chose a 5 ohm resistor and we'll talk about how you choose the ohmage value of the resistor and, and I chose it for 5 watts. So let me talk a little bit about the theory of operation of how this works. So notice I have input plus and input minus. So this is where we would connect whatever we're testing, whether it's a battery or a power supply. Here's where its current's going to flow and we're going to use the Arduino and the op amp along with the MOSFET to control that current profile so we can make the power supply put out as much or as little current as we want and we can change that around based on you know what we're trying to simulate another thing i'll mention in this design is we're using the mosfet as a variable resistor so let's explain let's let's take a quick run through this and explain how it works so let's say i have my dac output let's say i set my dac output on my arduino for one volt this one volt is going to go into the inverting end or the non-inverting end of the op amp. I then notice I have the inverting end connected to the same node as the top of the resistor. So what's going to happen is when I have one volt here, the op amp is going to drive the gate of the MOSFET to try until you have one volt here. So the op amp is either going to turn on or swing one way or the other, and it's going to drive this, this MOSFET either more on or more off until the voltage here equals the voltage here, which is going to be the same as the voltage here. Once that happens, then we're at our set point. And so, for instance, in the example I mentioned, if we have one volt here, 
and the op amp is going to drive the MOSFET. Let's say we have a, we're testing a power supply that's 5 volts, right? We have 5 volts coming in. The, mo the op amp is going to drive the MOSFET until we have 1 volt here. So we would have 4 volts dropped over the MOSFET. We would have 1 volt dropped over the resistor. Once we know, once, you know, and this all happens very quickly, you know, microseconds. So once we get our one volt here, using Ohm's law, we know this resistance value. We know that 200 milliamps is flowing through this resistor, right? And if we use Ohm's law, we know that, or if we use you know, basic cir circuit theory, we know that in series, resist, excuse me, current is common. So if we have 200 milliamps here, we have 200 milliamps here, we have 200 milliamps coming out of the power supply. Now, if I change this voltage higher, I get more of a voltage drop here. The resistance of my MOSFET is less, and we're going to get more current flowing through our circuit because we just decrease the overall resistance of this circuit. And if I lower this voltage, I have the opposite effect. So we're using our DAC to basically drive the MOSFET as a variable resistor, but in a predictive way so we can control the output. So for instance, if I were to output a sine wave from this DAC, I would see a sine wave pattern here of current. Okay, so that's the basic theory behind that of, of how this is working. And the key thing is we need to know what this resistor value is so we can know what the current is flowing through this. Now, one limitation I'll point out, and this is important when you're choosing your resistance value is if you get too much of a voltage drop across this resistor the and if you know MOSFET theory of operation the MOSFET is going to be harder to turn on because you need your gate to be above a certain source level so you don't want to choose a resistance here that's too high or what will happen is you'll keep trying to drive this MOSFET and eventually you'll get to some wall and you won't be able to make this voltage increase no matter how much you make your DAC value so that's just something you have to play around with based on what type of power supply you want to test, how much current it puts out, so on and so forth. And it's also important to be aware of how much current is flowing through these and how much heat or power dissipation can this resistor and this MOSFET handle. And you might have to add like a heat sink or something depending on how much you're going to work with. Okay, let's look at some code with the Arduino Zero and then we'll look at this design in action. And I'll... I'll test this design on an actual uh, power supply that's a pretty advanced power supply that can measure its own current so we can kind of see that it's working. Okay, here's the simple Arduino code and in part two and, and maybe three, we'll actually get into more advanced code. This is just for just to show the theory of operation that I just explained is gonna work and we'll do more advanced stuff in the code in part two. So all I do in the code is in setup, I set A0, which is the DAC pin on the Arduino Zero. I set it to an output. Also by default, it, it is set for eight bits of resolution on the DAC. So what I use is I use analog write resolution setting to change it to 10. So that's its highest resolution. So if I leave it at eight bit, I can only set 255 different points. If it's at 10 bit, I could set 1024 points. Then I just loop. And what I do in the loop is first I write the DAC value to 16. And 16 essentially, you can see my math here, essentially equals about two milliamps of current and about 10 millivolts of voltage drop across the five ohm resistor. I delay for 500 milliseconds. And then I do another analog write for 310, which is essentially one volt, which will be 200 milliamps through the five ohm resistor. And then I delay for just 50 milliseconds. What I'm trying to do here is just simulate a basic circuit that maybe is turning off and then turning on to transmit data. Maybe it's sort of an IoT design and then it goes back into off condition. So once again, just trying to simulate that and this loop goes around and you can see the current changes pretty suddenly. But because of the op amp and the, the MOSFET having the right bandwidth, we're able to, to make these sudden current changes. And, and we'll see this in the video. So speaking of the video, let's check out the video and see this circuit and code in action. Okay, here is my setup. First of all, I have my Arduino Zero here. 
On my breadboard, I have my e-load circuit, my simple e-load circuit. So here is the op amp. Over here is the MOSFET. You can see it's pretty large. If I needed extra power dissipation, I could attach a heat sink to it. And then here, attached to these two wires is my 5 ohm, 5 watt resistor, so a high powered resistor. Now, this analog power supply, or I should say not analog, linear power supply in the background is supplying my plus and minus voltage to power my op amp. And then these yellow and red wire is actually the, the device under test that I'm simulating. And you'll see it's going to be a more advanced power supply. So let me let me start this video and I just kind of do a couple zoom in so you can kind of see the circuit a little better. Op amp, MOSFET, you know, my two different power rails on each side. So there we go. We zoom in a little more. Once again, pretty simple circuit. Now here's the advanced power supply that we're going to use for this example. And let me uh, wait for a good picture to show up. Let me stop it there. So this is a, a DC power analyzer by Agilent Technologies, which is now Keysight Technologies. But what's nice about this power supply is it has a current and voltage digitizer. So whatever I set it for, I can see the output current like you would on an oscilloscope. So what you're looking at is the voltage which since this power supply is in constant voltage mode, we're going to have a constant 5 volt power, power output. And then we have our current pulses. So remember, this is not caused by the power supply. This is what the power supply is measuring at its output. And this is caused by our E-load. This is our 10 millivolts or 2 milliamps right here for 500 milliseconds. And then this jumps up to about 200 milliamps for about 50 milliseconds. So this is showing that our e-load is working. And, and what I do is I, I, I switch the screen real quick. So I'm showing you the meter view, which is showing five volts and showing the current. And if you look real close, you'll see the current jump a couple times. That's because of our pulses. Did you see that jump? Now I'm going to switch back to the scope view to what we were just looking at. And we can see the scope updates every once in a while. And then I'm going to add the cursor so we can actually make a measurement. So I press once run stop and then I add the cursors. And so what I can do now is show the measurement so we can see that we're getting what we expect to get. So I move one of the cursors to the pulse and I leave one of them there. And as I focus in on what we're trying to see, give it one second and focus is much clearer. There we go. I'll pause it right there. M1 is the cursor that's on the pulse. And what are we getting? We're getting about 194 milliamps. So remember, in our calculations, we were supposed to get about 200. So we're a little low, but I, I bet you why we're a little low is because of that, the voltage at the source is going up a little bit and it's, it's affecting how much we can turn on the MOSFET. But once again, that's still really close. So at M2, we're getting 11 milliamps. Now we really were expecting two milliamps. So we're a little high on that, but we have a way to detect that and, and measure that error later. And, and I can discuss that, but you can see there's a little air at the low end, slight air at the high end, but a little more air at the low end. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of the video. Okay, that's gonna be it for part one on how to build a simple DC electronic load with Arduino. In part two, we're going to look at doing a little more advanced measurements so we know some of the values uh, as they happen dynamically. And you notice we were a little off on some of the currents, and so we're going to look at how to compensate that, compensate for those little errors. And those are just due to, to sort of imperfections in the circuit, but we're going to look how to uh, deal with those in, in part two and maybe in part three. Anyway, if you have anything to add or any questions, use the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you back for part two.